Okay. Uh, let me start by asking you about the payroll tax cut controversy that's going on back in Washington. Are Republicans handing President Obama an election year issue to you saying that he wanted to cut taxes for the middle class and the Republicans are not doing that? Even the Wall Street Journal today said that uh, the Republican Party should just cut its losses yeah. and vote for this. I, I think it's, now it is, it's just spin on both sides, who's going to get the blame? But I think what, what the problem is, is nobody admits where the real problem is, that we're bankrupt and we don't know how to handle it and they don't want to offer the solutions. So whether Obama's going to get blamed, the Republican get blamed, uh, I think that's just sort of something that... Uh, uh, is made up of it. I, I don't see that as the critical point. It's why, why are we in this mess? So I, I don't pick one side or the other. But, but, but you're a member of Congress. You're there. Uh, are the Republicans doing the right thing here by saying, no, we won't take this two months. We're not going to go along well, with the Senate. Yeah. These are the same people who didn't want the, yeah. the, the payroll tax cut uh, to begin with. Yeah, I, I, I know, but they have an impossible thing. There's no right and wrong in this bill. I don't want uh, to put the tax back on the payroll. You know, I want to cut it. But I don't want to, uh, I don't want to extend the unemployment benefits. So where, where's the right and wrong answer to that? You can't assume that. How would that, you vote? Uh, you, you know what, I have no, I probably would vote no because uh, and, and unless I save more money from the taxes than it would cost on the unemployment. So I do an arithmetic, and I didn't do the final analysis on that because I've been, you know, on the road. But it would be an arithmetic problem for me if the taxes, uh, if the tax cuts were greater than the expenditures, then I would vote for it. Okay, but you're here in Iowa. You see what this looks like. To well, yeah, us. to me it looks like the government is uh, in, in, in gridlock. But it isn't the Republican and the Democrat. It's the system. It's the bankruptcy of the country. It's this uh, money that we spend and nobody wants to cut, and they don't know how to handle this. Neither side will admit the seriousness of the problem. That's, the, that's where, where, where the gridlock comes from. I, I've spoken with some Republicans here in Iowa, and we heard it here today at the event, this question of them all being sick of the, of the negative advertising. You're running a lot of negative ads, particularly against Newt Gingrich, calling, accusing him of serial hypocrisy, which is a personal charge. Um, would you be willing to stop running those ads? No. Why not? Because I don't consider them uh, uh, attacking him unfairly. I mean, it just points out the position he's been on. That's my job, to show what my opponents do. They flip-flop around and they change position. And if the media won't do it, I should do it. What about this notion of super PACs, these outsiders coming into, into uh, Iowa, spending millions of dollars on behalf of certain candidates? Do you, do you like the idea of that? No, but uh, I don't want to put, write a law that says people aren't allowed to spend the money the way they want. What I want to do is eliminate the environment. I want to eliminate the auction. The government is a big auction. They steal money, and then they pass it out, and they give the incentive. So regulating expenditures in campaigning is like regulating lobbyists. I don't want the regulations because people have a right to petition their government. The problem is big government having too much power and too much control and too much to auction off and therefore the incentives are too great. So you're looking at a symptom when you think it's the expenditures of the money or the lobbyists. So the people who concentrate on that are missing the whole point. Uh, on foreign policy, there was someone in the back of the room today you didn't hear who didn't have a microphone was asking a question about foreign policy. Uh, would we be safe? under a Ron Paul administration. There are some Republicans who say that you're dangerous, that you're soft on Iran. Can, can you think of a circumstance in which you would use military force against Iran? Sure. If, if they attacked us, if they were a threat to our national security. You mean if they attacked us directly? Well, how they else should they attack Israel? You? If they attacked Israel, no. No, well, if somebody decided that was in our national security interests, uh, then it has to go to the Congress. I don't decide that thing. That's what we're not supposed to do. That's what I'm sick and tired of. You go to the Congress, and if it's in national security interest, yes, you use military force. But quite frankly, uh, in the last 50 years, we, uh, our national security has never been threatened by Korea or Vietnam uh, or the Libyans or the Iraqis. Uh, our national security has not been threatened. And now, now we were attacked by terrorists. By, and who are they? They don't, what country are they? What, from an assortment of countries. 
Yeah, so you attack all the countries of the world? That's crazy. What you do is you attack, you go after the people who caused it. And I voted for this authority to go after the people responsible. But they, the president then used that as an excuse to do something he had been itching to do for years, and that is invade and take over and throw, overthrow a government. That's what, that is what is wrong. Matter of fact, under those circumstances, what I said is keep your eye on the target, use the principle of the letter and mark and reprisal because a country did not attack us. Uh, what we were getting was retribution for our interference over there. And, and let me ask you, I mean, you've been answering a lot of questions lately about uh, the newsletters that were published under your name, and some of the things contained in them were conspiracy theories, some of them, some of them are considered racist, and you've, you know, you've disavowed them um, completely. But they were called the Ron Paul Report, and did you read them at all when they, were, when they were published during those years? Did you ever sort of take a look at it and say, you know what, this isn't what I stand for? Not all the time. But you did read them? Not all the time. Well, well on occasion, yes. And did you ever object when you read them? Well, you know, we, we talked about this twice yesterday, has CNN have. Why don't you go back and look at what I said yesterday on CNN and what I've said for 20-some years. is 22 years ago. I didn't write them. I disavow them. That's it. But you made money off of them. I was still practicing medicine. That was probably why I wasn't a very good publisher, because I had to make a living. But there are reports that you made almost a million dollars off of them in, in 1993. Oh, who, who, I'd like to sh see that money. But would you give it back? If you made money off to of whom? them and you disavowed, well, I, if, charity, if, charity, if you made money That's off of a, them and you disavow I, it. You know, I, di I didn't write them, and I don't endorse those views, and I've explained it many times. So you read them, but you didn't do anything about it at the time. I never read that stuff. I never, I've never read it. I, came up, I, I was probably aware of it 10 years after it was written. And it's been going on 20 years that people have pestered me about this, and uh, CNN does it every single time. So well, when are you going to wear yourself I mean, out? When you say it's a, no, but when are you, you going to do that? Is it legitimate? I mean, is it a legitimate question to ask that something yeah. went out and when you get your the name? And when so. you get the answer, it's legitimate that you uh, sort of take the answers I get. You know what the answer is? I, I didn't read, write them. I didn't read them at the time, and I disavow them. That is the answer. But you made money off of it. Uh, if you know, if you know, I made money on it. You know more about my finances than I do. Do you know that you didn't? I mean, I don't even know what you're talking about. I mean, uh, you know, if it was published for ten years, so if that was one percent of all the newsletter, I made money off, uh, you know, uh, talking about gold stocks. Uh, I, I think you're really confused on that. Okay. Well, it's just a question. I mean, it's legitimate. It's it's legitimate. These things are pretty incendiary, you know. The because of people like you. No, 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 no. <laughs> Come on. Some of the stuff was very incendiary, and in, you know, saying that in in 1993 the Israelis were responsible for the bombing of the World Trade Center, that kind of yeah. stuff. So, right. Goodbye. All right, all right. Thank you, Congressman. I appreciate yeah. your okay, answer. Sir. I appreciate your answering the questions, and you understand it's our job to Thank ask. You. Thank you. You don't? Okay. Well, I understand. Uh, how the system works.